welcome to this week's News Bulletin Roundup. Let's take a look at the headlines. The World Health Organization to investigate virus origins in China's Wuhan. The U.S. State Secretary warns about Chinese Communist Party's heavy presence in American campuses. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell acknowledged President-elect Joe Biden's victory. Millions displaced, impoverished and traumatized, says UN Security Council. Biden administration is good news for Canada, says Canada's foreign affairs minister. Bangladesh celebrated independence from Pakistan. India's prime minister paid tribute to fallen soldiers on the 50th anniversary of 1971 India-Pakistan war. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson will be the chief guest at India Republic Day next month. Mahatma Gandhi's reputation should be respected, White House on desecration of his statue. Starting with the news of COVID-19 pandemic origin. A team of 10 international scientists will travel to the Chinese city of Wuhan next month to investigate the origins of COVID-19, remarked the World Health Organization. Beijing has been reluctant to agree to an independent inquiry. The virus is thought to have come from a market in the city selling animals. President Donald Trump's administration has accused China of trying to conceal the initial outbreak. The U.S. administration has targeted China again. Some of the Chinese Communist Party's biggest victims on the campuses are innocent Chinese nationals themselves. But the CCP doesn't just target Chinese nationals. They want to influence American students, professors and administrators too, said U.S. State Secretary Mike Pompeo. There are many American scholars, often doing research funded by American taxpayers, that have been lured into the Chinese Communist Party's talent recruitment programs. The CCP pays them what is for them a fortune to do research related to their current fields for or in China and then often uses the fruits of their brain power to build its military strength. Moving to the U.S. election results. Over a month after the U.S. presidential elections, state majority leader Mitch McConnell on Tuesday congratulated President-elect Joe Biden for the first time and publicly acknowledged him in the position after the U.S. Electoral College on Monday officially certified the former vice president's victory in the polls. So today I want to congratulate President-elect Joe Biden. The president-elect is no stranger to the Senate. He's devoted himself to public service for many years. I also want to congratulate the vice president-elect, our colleague from California, Senator Harris. Beyond our differences, all Americans can take pride that our nation has a female vice president-elect for the very first time. Now talking about the situation in Syria. Speaking via video conference, the UN Humanitarian Affairs Chief, Mark Laucock, said that millions have been left displaced, impoverished and traumatized and suffering deep personal loss. He thanked donors who are helping to assist families through winter, detailing that distribution is underway to reach more than three million of the neediest. The humanitarian impact of the economic crisis in Syria, third, the protection of civilians, fourth, humanitarian access, and lastly, our assessment of the humanitarian situation as a whole as 2020 draws to a close. Mr. President, the number of reported COVID-19 cases in Syria continues to rise, though limited testing in all parts of the country makes the extent of the outbreak impossible to assess with any certainty. Talking about the Canada-U.S. relations, says Canada's Foreign Affairs Minister Francis Philip Champagne, that the incoming Biden administration in the United States will help stabilize the world order and give North America a good shot at beating COVID-19 and fighting climate change. Bangladesh celebrated its 49th independence on December 16th this year. Bangladesh's Prime Minister in the televised address to the nation on the eve of this day said it was going to be observed in a different circumstance this year considering the public health risk due to the coronavirus. December 16th is a significant day for India and its neighbours Bangladesh and Pakistan. In 1971, India won its war against Pakistan that resulted in the birth of Bangladesh, then East Pakistan. 
On this day 49 years ago, Pakistan lost half its country, its forces to the east, and had to publicly surrender to India. India Prime Minister Modi paid tribute to fallen soldiers at the National War Memorial on the 50th anniversary of 1971 India-Pakistan War. Prime Minister was accompanied by Defence Minister Rajnath Singh and Vijay Divas in celebrating every year on December 16th to mark India's triumph in liberating Bangladesh from Pakistan in 1971. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has accepted India's very generous invite to be the Republic Day guest chief at next month's celebrations in Delhi. UK's Foreign Secretary said, A great honour. This will be for Boris Johnson's first major bilateral visit since he took charge last year. His office has highlighted. That Prime Minister Johnson has uh, invited Prime Minister Modi uh, to join the UK-hosted G7 summit next year. And Prime Minister Johnson has also gratefully accepted the very generous invitation to attend India's Republic Day celebrations in January, which is a great honour. Currently, UK Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab is on India's visit. He has met with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Their discussions covered various facets of strategic partnership. External Affairs Minister Dr. Jay Shankar, NSA, Ajit Doval, were present in the meeting. Earlier, the UK Foreign Secretary also met with Dr. Jason Kerr. Both the leaders discussed opportunities in the post-COVID world for a stronger Indo-UK partnership. I think the Foreign Secretary comes here at a very important time. Uh, in a way, I'm answering the question you posed to him. Uh, it's an important time because we are looking at a post-COVID world, even independently of the COVID, India was looking at, uh, I would say, re-engineering many of its important relationships in a more imaginative and productive way. We're also looking at a post-Brexit world uh, from the perspective of the UK. The White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany spoke on desecration of Mahatma Gandhi's statue during the protest against new farm laws. McEnany said no statue or memorial should be desecrated, and certainly not of Gandhi, who really fought for the values that America represents of peace, justice, and freedom. It's terrible. Um, no statue or memorial should be desecrated, and certainly not one uh, like that of Gandhi, who really fought for the values um, that America represents of peace, justice, and freedom. So that desecration uh, is appalling to see. It's appalling that it's happened more than once, and we believe uh, the reputation of Mahatma Gandhi should be respected, um, especially here in America's capital. That's all for you. Keep watching the International News Channel. I'm Julia Cosby.